Honestly, what we need to talk about music and life and love and everything in the universe and everything in between is one of our favorite, favorite artists. I know that you love the song as much as I do. Klingon is here. And um, apparently we haven't been saying his name too badly. So we're, we're going to yeah. be okay. <laughs> How have you been? How has the last 300 million days of varying degrees of lockdown been for you personally? It has been at the beginning. It was, you know, it was fine, you know, like because you get to, you get to tour so much since the last year. So when to have a little break at the beginning was great. Mm. But now it's, it's a little bit too long, you know. Um, I'm yeah, I, I've made a lot of music and everything. So now I'm just waiting for for touring again, and this is getting back, but very very slow. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's also going to be like forward, backwards, forward, backwards. I think. Exactly. Yeah, that's what happens. Yeah. Every time I get a uh, booking, uh, they always tell me, yeah, but tomorrow we can get cancelled. So, you know, it's. Uh... And for now, I, I didn't play yet, right? So um, wow. it, should, it should, should happen in August, yeah, maybe. Tell me something. Are you doing what the rest of us are doing and playing music for yourself in your kitchen and like drinking too much wine? Or are you waiting until you can do it for real? <laughs> I did a lot of night night like that, you know, being in the okay. kitchen, drinking my glass and uh, waiting. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. It's my kind of, of vibe that. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Okay. <laughs> See, big famous musos, we're all the same. We all get drunk in the kitchen by ourselves. Okay. Yeah. So talk to me about um, about the lockdown and, and what have you been up to? Because obviously you, you're not touring, you're not performing, you're not meeting any of your fans. And with big love, um, I feel like there's a lot of South Africans that have just discovered you and now want to connect with you. But now it's kind of only on social media across the board. How have you been navigating that? It's pretty special to release the music at the moment. You know, you don't get really the, the feedback of the people. You just release it, but that's it, you know. Um, so it's pretty frustrating. Um, yeah, so when I made big love, uh, you know, it was a strong message and was really, you know, uh, expecting to play it because it's really uplifting uh, when you play it and uh, but I don't know yet you know if the crowd <laughs> react well in a club and stuff so I'm gonna have to wait still a little bit that's crazy because back like I say back in the day it was a year and a half ago but back in the day when I was young you released a song and you could play it and you could get a feedback immediately right. from someone now you don't like I, I it's gonna you know it's gonna be great I know it's gonna be great but you don't know yeah. Yeah, right. You, you, you don't know. And uh, I played it just one time. It was for a live stream from Tomorrowland. But, you know, it's like without a crowd. So it doesn't count. But um, I, I, I wanted to ask you about that live stream for Tomorrowland because I, there it has to be different. How do you keep the energy when it's live streamed? Because you yeah, don't have... Super. Yeah, you're right. It's exactly the, the thing because it's super different because, you know, like uh, I did two live streams with them, but one was behind a green screen, you know, so it's pretty weird because when you, you know, when you want to, uh, to speak as a mic and stuff, you don't get any answer. So yeah. Uh, yeah, it's hard to look like you are playing live and not playing like in your uh, kitchen, you know what I mean? Like, because uh, <laughs> <laughs> you don't act the same, right? So um, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it was a little bit challenging, but uh, but you know, it was uh, the best way to share music, to still share music uh, uh, at that time. So uh, yeah, good experience still. Okay, but then also my next question is: so you you're doing the live stream, you're hyping yourself up, you're alone, right? You're you're doing the best you can, and then the li your live stream ends, and you're back here in this alone world of lockdown. How how did you manage dealing with that? Because I think I would be very sad, very sad. Yeah, but you know, then after that, I was like. Ex you know, I was looking for what the day is going to be uh, diffused to the people. So, you know, I was behind my computer waiting for the stream and super excited to see the comments of the people uh, about it. So, yeah, after that, um, so that I decided to, to stop a little bit the stream because, you know, doing some live stream because um, I think it's been, it was very, really, very really interesting to still share music with the crowd uh, in this way, you know, like, for example, doing a, a stream on Instagram and stuff. But at one point, I think people start uh, losing interest into this. Um, so I stopped that and um, yeah, now since now it's just waiting, 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 waiting. <laughs> okay, so at the moment, waiting, waiting, waiting. Obviously you have a game plan for when you're allowed to tour again. What does that look like for you? 
Yeah, so basically, I, I really took time to make music. Uh, it was, a, you know, it was a, the only thing to do. So um, I have quite a lot of stuff uh, to be released. So that's great for me because I never had this much song already, you know, uh, already <laughs> ready. And I always, always been in a rush. So now it's going to be a little bit more relaxed when it's going to start again. But um, yeah, also, you know, you get a bit anxious also to not know um, what, uh, what is the music one year and a half later, right? What people still expect. You know, normally you adjust uh, your taste to when you are playing and see what's what the crowd love at, at that time, you know. But now you don't really know what people want. So yeah. it's a little bit, you know, and you don't know also if people are waiting for you, you know. It's like, it's a little bit anxious uh, and anxiety. anxiety. Valid. That's so valid. Yeah. You know, I was speaking to someone the other day who um, she's a photographer, videographer, and she she was talking about the music videos that she was starting to shoot, busy shooting in 2019. And she said it's it's almost like the whole industry's paused and we're going to go back to 2019 when things open up again and there's going to have been no forward movement. But the guys that were moving forward are actually now going to have to take a step back and wait their turn for the older yeah. stuff to be released. And that's that's great for us, for, for people like yourself and like all of our favorites. But it's also very sad for me to think of the new and up and coming guys that have been working through this to yeah. create. You know, like I heard, like for example, Tons and I, you know, the band Tons and I, I heard that they never got to, to make a gig. <laughs> and they made, I don't know, I don't know how many hits, right? Yeah. So um, yeah, for people who made, uh, who made a smash during that time, it's, uh, it's not a good feeling, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They so didn't get what, what did they say, right? They didn't get the touring uh, of that with their music. So, yeah. But I mean, also, for someone like yourself who's been touring and has not slept for years, this must have been great. Like, what have you been doing with all this extra time and sleep and energy? <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, it was, I was back to a healthy life, actually. Like, you know, I'm, Having just good food, not being in like in an airport and taking a burger in the morning, yeah. you know, it's like it's, it was it was great, you know, to get back uh, in good shape. So, like I said, it's, it's it was a good feeling to stop for a little bit. Um, uh, but yeah, now it has been like you now we are two summer like this, and uh, yeah, it's a little bit long. But. Tell me something. Um, the balance that you found now with with having forced lockdown and having to be forced to eat well, sleep well, look after you as a person. Are you are you gonna maybe take some of that into when the when the world opens up again, as opposed to going back to completely rock star living? I think yeah, I think I'm gonna stay um, stay like that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Would you looking way more after me and uh, and my health? Yeah, yeah, but definitely yeah. So necessary. Okay, but we still want yeah, rock star, yeah. and we still want to party, and we still want to dance to your songs. So like, not fully in though. Yeah, so talk exactly. to me. Okay, single big love blowing up here in South Africa. Everyone loves it. It is charting across the country. Talk to me about this single. When was was it written during lockdown or before? Uh, so, how, talk yeah, to me about it that. has been um, an easy process for me because um, I got the top line from a rebel. So uh, you know, I love when it's when a song like start like this. Sometimes you know, I go into the studio and I write everything with the writer, but sometimes I just get a good top line. And, um, and I'm producing it, and that's how it went with this one, you know. So I, I just, I had the top line. I think he wanted to keep it for his album, but I just loved the song so much that I put. I say like, man, we need to do it. <laughs> so I really pushed it um, to get it, and um, and yeah, then uh, it was pretty easy to produce. You know, I had the idea with the violin and stuff, and mm -hmm. you know, I always like to add some live element into my music. So so yeah, it, it felt a really good king on song and the message was strong. Um, and this guy has a really particular voice and that's what also I'm really chasing when I'm making music. You know, I'm not chasing the name, I'm not chasing the tones of the voice, the characteristic of the voice. Um, when the voice uh, is a little bit different from others, that's what I like, yeah. When you are producing, when you say, so you get the project, right? And, and you're like, okay, this is gonna be big love. How long does it take for you on average from beginning to end to, is it is it an easy process for you because you're doing it all or is it something that you you really can't let go of and you're perfecting it and you're fine-tuning it until someone else says to you okay we're done now what is that yeah. process for you i think at the beginning i was like that like when uh with my first songs that i released uh you know like back in then when i was doing jubel and stuff 
I think it took me like yeah, two months, two months of just fine tuning everything. It was just, uh, and uh, I had I, I had people around me telling me, okay, now you need to release it because you know if you're a perfectionist, it's super complicated. And one day I was like, okay, I'm gonna trust you, I'm gonna do it, and I release it, and it was too bad. It was you know my biggest song, and uh, so I think yeah, it's really important to believe in uh, in your decision when you make music. Because if you don't really believe in you, you really get stuck. And sometimes you just give up the project because you feel like, oh, it's not good enough. But sometimes you just need to push it a little bit more and you can, uh, something great can happen. And um, now with time, you know, I get to, to work with, you know, good mix engineer and stuff like that. So for me, the, the process is a little bit easier. I take yeah. less care of, you know, fine tuning everything. Um, I'm more about the, yes, yeah, writing process is more important for me and finding the, um, the great idea for the drop. Mm. Mm. There are a lot of people at the moment who have used this time to focus on the things that they were doing as side hustles, right? And a lot of them, producers, DJs, songwriters, engineers, have been working on projects now more than they've ever worked on before. And I think having you on a Zoom, um, I have to ask this question. If you could go back and tell yourself where you were starting, like in your bedroom back in the day, one thing, what would that one thing be? So, uh, <laughs> that's, um, big, big question. Sorry. Yeah, no, it's it's a pretty interesting question actually. Um, I think what I did one mistake at one point is that I tried to change my song uh, pretty fast. You know, when I made Jubel after that, I was like, yeah, but I don't want to be categorized categorized like a, a saxophone artist, right? Mm -hmm. So, so I I switched my style pretty quickly with some other instrument. And I, I should have, you know, just trust myself and be like, okay, let's let's do some more of this. People want this. Let's keep on doing this. You know, I'm not uh, thinking too much about oh, what the people want. Uh, you know, I want to be cool. I want to be the no. This is uh, you should you should really do, really do what 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 you feel like, and uh, people will follow. Because also at the beginning, you know, you, you get super, super overconfident. Also, you know, you make a song. It's about my first song ever, and the song made um, made really good. So then you're like, oh, it's not. That's a big deal, you know, to, <laughs> to make a big track. <laughs> but then you realize, you know, man, you know, of course, and that is, it's, it's very difficult. And the music is like a wave, you know, sometimes it, it's up and then it goes down and you just need to, to navigate through it um, through, the, through the years and stay, stay fresh. Yeah. Okay. Stay fresh. And tell me yes. one last question. Have you ever made something that you've really, really loved and your team is like, no, not this one? Does that happen to you? Yeah, it happens sometimes. It's still now, actually. But, uh, you know, it's because I love also... Because some songs are just too slow, you know? Like, the BPM is just not <laughs> uplifting. It's, it's, like, moody, you know? Because I love moody track. I love melancholic stuff. And for, sometimes it's not, you know, it's not for the club. And I have to realize that I'm still a club artist. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, that's what I want to do, you know? Uh, to be more categorized, like, club. So I, I sometimes when the song just doesn't fit the club, I just... I just had to give up, but even if I would love to, to, to release it. Yeah. Okay, so where to from here? What does the next couple of months look like? Are we getting new music? What's happening? Yeah, so I think I'm going to release in September. Um, like now, I decide to do like a rhythm of every two months a new song, okay. you know, to get, uh, you know, to, to feed um, the following and, you know, like just giving them lots of music. And um, yeah, back then I was doing maybe one song every six months because it's just not enough. So I, I want to get more productive. And um, and yeah, so I have like three of three songs that I'm for mainly done and I just have to decide which one. But it's not, you know, it's not the hardest process, right? <laughs> when you have the shows, it's, it's the best process. <laughs> okay, and then like touring, is there any talk of you touring, performing again? Um. I have some show in Italy maybe next month, but you know, like, like uh, I don't know if, if it's gonna happen, uh, yeah. but I, I cross my finger for it. And I have some show in Romania, also in France. Yeah, it's, it's getting slowly back. Um, but I don't want to get, you know, over excited because um, I don't want to get disappointed again. <laughs> Anything can happen. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Uh, last thing, message for your fans in South Africa. Oh, just, Thank you for uh, the support uh, through the years. Um, I know I had a really great following there, so I can't wait to come back there. Um, and uh, it's also a, a place that I really, really like. So yeah, uh, maybe, maybe next year, I think, yeah, for sure.